Alright guys, back again with another super build for the Hunters, but the focus this time round will be on the Celestial Nightcrawl Helm, and combining that with the NG Converter mod, so we can make use of our super a lot more often than normal, and in many ways, increase the amount of DPS you can pull off. Now unlike the Shadow Galanon version I did quite a while back, it won't have the same effect sadly as in regen and super beyond its limits, and allowing you to rain absolute havoc on enemies over and over again. But this build we have here, will allow us to delete, or in my case, weaken the much more tougher enemies at a safer distance, especially the champions in Nightfall ordeals. And all of this will be a win-win for you at the end of the day, as the idea of the build is pretty much stop the larger and much more resilient enemies who require a specific combo or heavy just to singly take them out. What we have here is the key to that, and something I want to do in quite a while. Hello everyone, Freely here here, and welcome back to another Destiny 2 build for this week's content. I hope you're all keeping safe out there no matter where you are in the world. As today, we're going to be focusing on the NG Converter mod, and combining that with the Celestial Nighthawk to craft a quick, easy, and devastating Super Golden Gun build for the endgame content. The build is achievable for all players as you only need the two following equipments, but if you wish to expand on it more and get more out of it, then it would be wise to stick around and see what else the build will hold. And also, if you have any build ideas or recommendations that you would like to see me do and pull off, by all means please do leave a comment in the comment section. So with that out of the way, the subclass we will be going with is the Way of the Sharpshooter, as every single perk within the tree line will offer some benefit toward building up a super quickly, or overall making our class just better in the long run. The plan for the build is to utilise our one-shot golden gun as many times as we can against both bosses, ultras and champions, and have it freely available when I can't use my heavy instead. So for us to go about this, I will need a subclass that can hold up to that idea in the way for me to go about and achieve it. Now in comes the way of the sharpshooter with his perks that can offer what I am looking for. Practice makes perfect offers us a reduced cooldown upon landing position hits for our super, and as we are going to be using the bad juju pulse to aid us in the super regen, it means building up our supers can happen a lot more faster than normal. Plus, using a pulse provides better accuracy for landing position hits, so you are always going to be accurate nonetheless. Next, knock him down offers us a boost in stability and handling, so in many ways, works alongside practice makes perfect. At the same time, it also boosts our super damage by an extra 30%, which in all, makes it perfect for setting up a pure damage golden gun build. And then lastly, we have the line em up perk, which offers us orbs of light on between the hits with our golden gun, increases its damage, and extends its duration. Overall, the whole subclass is working with you for boosting super damage across the board for you to do as much damage as you can with your one shot available. Now for grenades, I've chosen the incendiary nades for their damage, blast radius, and overall effectiveness for clearing and damaging enemies. But I've also chosen them for which one will do the overall most amount of damage when I also use my energy converter mod, as if done right, I can get a plus 50 and more on top of that depending on if my grenades kill after it lands its hit. Now for weaponry you're going to need to have the bad juju exotic to aid you in building up your super quickly, and then secondary with the demolitionist perk to help with building up your grenades quickly. Although this can be missed out completely if your discipline stat is at a moderate level. Heavy doesn't need to be anything specific, just something that you can use for extra damage when needed. My primary slot has the bad juju exotic pulse rifle and is generally the best weapon to pick for any build or loadout in mind, where you want to focus on the improvement of super regen rate. Now bad juju used to give a much larger chunk of super back around the season of opulence to where it was first introduced, and then over the few months, enough eventually came down the line for the way of super regen work for most gears, abilities and weapons, and Bad Juju plus Skull Dio Ahamkara was the hit the hardest out of all of them. Now, unlike the Skull, the Bad Juju won't hit too bad to the point of players ignoring it, but for how much super you get back, it's not amazing either. Either way you look at it, the String of Curses perk is still amazingly powerful, as the perk will offer you a damage increase for your weapon, will refill your weapon's magazine upon getting kills with it, and of course, grant super energy upon kills, based upon how much string of curses you have. This is what you want to be using, so you can build up your super quickly, alongside with your subclass, and along with your mods, as the flexibility of region method will all interlink with each other, and if you don't have it, now is a good time to try and get it before you do lose your chance. 
For secondary, I'm using the 7th Serif SI2 sidearm with snap stop sights, demolitionist, and steady bounce. Ideally, any sidearm or shotgun is good to have as you're not restricted in terms of damage needed to be outputted, and that's already covered. What you truly want is a weapon that has the demolitionist perk as this will aid you in burning up your grades quickly, but also help with setting the phase up for activating the NG Converter mod whenever you are ready. As my discipline stat is in the 30 ranges, I don't plan on improving it anymore through armor stats as I just want to focus on building up my super quickly. But logically, it makes more sense to have a perk available on my weapon to aid in building up my super via the NG Converter mod since that's the point of the build. Anyways, the sidearm is flexible in stats but lacks range which means you're going to need to be up close and personal to get the most out of the weapon. It's also wise to add a backup mag on the weapon as you will run out of ammo quickly and it's also wise to masterwork it as you will need to get charged with lights for our mod. For a heavy, I've gone with the falling guillotine sword with surrounded, relentless strike and balanced guard for a very effective sword DPS against ultra bosses or champions. To be honest, you're probably going to see this in a lot of my builds as the sword is one of the best DPS weapons in game at the moment and a lot of players will run around with it because of meta. As I don't plan on using my sword much, unless against the tougher or ultra-like enemies, this slot can be freely changed to whatever you like, just make sure it fits the right content you're using it in though. For stats, our focus should be the intelligence and discipline stat as they are both overall going to be the most used stats out of everything else. Ideally, you're going to want to focus on the intelligence stats and get it to around the 60 to 70 ranges for a 4 minutes 18 seconds or 4 minutes 7 second cooldown and nothing more from there. As any more will generally put the rest of the super regen mods, subclass perks and bad juju exotic perk at risk of being underutilized. You want to make sure your stat is at an okay level that balances out with the rest of the gear. So when you use everything at the end, you'll notice the common changes as happening. Now for my discipline, I've left it in the 30 ranges for a 1 minute 22 second cooldown as I know I won't be fully using it until my energy converter mod is at times 5 and this in general won't be used until I have at least 0 super available, which will be before or after I use my super. Of course, I'll make sure that this area is covered by using the demolition perk, so all my areas are covered in many ways, but you may want to invest in this area if you feel like it deserves more support than shown. Everything else left over should be allocated in areas of survivability, so resilience and recovery like normal. Now for armor pieces which will need to be this season and last season's armor like always, you will need two solar affinity pieces with one allowing you to carry the supercharged mod and another for the charged up mod and then two void affinities for the energy converter mod and take a charge mod. For your exotic helm, no specific affinity is required unless you want it to correspond with your weapon and stats don't really matter either for the helm unless you get one for the intelligence stat to which you can then go ahead and further customize your grenade stat instead. Now for the mods, the thing that makes a build, a build. We have head, resilience mod, arm, resilience, unstoppable pulse rifle and charged up mod, chest, intelligence and supercharged mod, leg, intelligence, sidearm scavenger and taking charge mod, cloak, concussion dampener, insulation, Distribution and Energy Converter mod. Now, many of you here may have used this build before, but from another time when Celestial Nighthawk was part of the meta in Raids and Nightfalls. And don't get me wrong, CN is still as popular as it was before and still gets a lot of love in the higher tier content when fully optimized. But now, we can fully utilize it even more through the Energy Converter mod that provides a plus 10 super regen up times 5 per charge with light we have. So in a better explanation, if I have one charge with light with the mod and throw my grenade, I will get plus 10 super regen given to me. And the same goes for if I have 2, 3, 4 and 5 charged with lights, but nothing more from there. And that's how it will be incorporated into the build. I have two ways of going about this. I can firstly build up my charge with light up to times 5 and have my grenade ready and then use it against a crowd of enemies to activate my energy converter mod for a plus 15 super regen there and then and perhaps some extra kills and super regen upon any kills and then go from there. Or I could play the long con game and get my buffs up and going for my mods and subclass perks, 
I use my super against a tanky enemy and land crit shots so I can get orbs of light to drop. Pop my grenade buff at times 5 for the plus 50 super regen and then pick up the orbs of light for extra boost which could potentially place me at 70-80% to super ready. And then go from there. The choice in the matter to how you go about this is down to you but I would recommend you try out both and try and see if you can utilize them both to see where you can end up with them and which one is best to fully use in different types of content. Now the damage you do is also something worth investing in if you're looking at Memphis to build a super DPS damage build for the high tier content. For example, when I use this build against the Ogre in the Tribute Hall, I got some interesting numbers. With the Knock Him Down and Practice Made Perfect perks, my crits equal 202,290 and my bodies equal 87,465. Now, without this subclass perks at all, no buffs, no nothing, our crits equals 201,727 and bodies equals 87,455. So as you can see, the damage difference between the two are practically near identical. Except that with our subclass perks going, you're getting that extra bit of damage. Now, thanks to that extra bit of damage, it works out well for the build as we dish out damage at a much faster rate with what we currently have. One thing to be aware of though is that the energy converter mod stacks at 50% and only 50% when used. Now, what I mean by this is that if your super is at say 60% and then you use your mod perks to activate energy converter, it will throw your grenade like normal but not activate the mod but instead allow you to keep your stack charge of lights once you are below the 50 mark. And this is something that Bungie did as I believe they didn't want to make super spamming game way too broken than ever before. Which is why you want to use it in the building stages before you hit 50% of your own super bar. So if you're at say 10%, 20% and then you use the mod, it will activate and it will fill in the rest of the 50%. But any more than that and the mod won't activate. Another thing you also need to be aware of is that the Celestial Nighthawk will give you back 25% super regen upon kills with your super activation. This does not stack like the ways of Shard of Galanor and the mod does, so no matter what you do, you will not get 75% super back if you time it correctly like the Shard and Energy Converter mod does, sadly. Which sadly means you are limited in terms of what you can and can't do with the mod which hopefully I can cover a bit more at a later date. Overall, a interesting take on this Celestial Nighthawk build that we see so much of and how this version can allow you to utilize your super much more quicker with the use of the energy converter mod. Everything in the build can be easily achieved and I'm very sure you'll see many other players using this setup for the many new and tougher content to come. But for the newer players out there, if you want to get up to date and you really want to try the new tougher content, give this build here a go and I promise you it will not let you down. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on twitter to keep up to date with destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again thanks for stopping by and I'll see you all in the next one.